Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, some months ago, I did a uh, kind of a all-encompassing video on uh, what hams might buy for tools. Tools. Real important to have a whole bunch of tools that you never use, uh, you know, in the amateur radio hobby. Very important. <clears throat> anyway, uh, today I was going to try to zero in on some of the tools uh, in my repair bag uh, that I carry around when I go portable, uh, especially for the new hands, kind of give them an idea of what are the most important things to have in your tool bag. Well, of course, the first thing you're going to need is a bag. So, you know, I stepped out there and I bought a uh, regular old Stanley uh, little tool bag, kind of heavy duty. It uh, carries most everything I need, including things I don't need, but think I might need, you know, like uh, connectors of all types and uh, uh, crimp connectors of all types and sizes and very rarely get to use those. Once in a while, uh, I might use them. But what I wanted to do today, uh, and I'm going to put a link to the original video down, down in the bottom in the comments, so if you want to see the original video, uh, you can go to it. But I did want to cover some of the more important pieces of tools or things you might include in your repair bag if you're an amateur radio. So let's, no particular order to these, just how I grab them off the desk. So uh, let's go. Uh, I've got two types of uh, tape in the bag. I've got regular electrical, black electrical tape. I usually buy a good brand, 3M or something, good brand of electrical tape. That's in the bag, so that's got to be in the bag for sure. But I also buy what's called rescue tape. This is, uh, you can get these at automotive uh, outlets, uh, I find them in, like at O'Reilly's and places like that will carry it. Uh, you can buy it off the internet too. I call it rescue tape. It doesn't have an adhesive on it. It sticks to itself. So what you do when you wrap uh, coax to keep it waterproof is you put this on first. You cut a little piece of it off. You wrap the connection with this. And then you come back and wrap it with electrical tape. So at some point in the future, uh, if you're going to have to take it apart, you can just cut it off of there with uh, some kind of exacto uh, uh, knife or something, and it just comes undone. There's no residue or anything, black stuff stuck all over the connectors when you do that. So wrap it first with re rescue tape and then wrap it with electrical tape. <clears throat> Your connections will be very waterproof. Also in the bag, I carry uh, two kinds of solder. I carry a real fine solder. Uh, I don't know what kind of image you're going to get on that, but maybe you'll get a good one. A real narrow one, and then a uh, bigger uh, diameter one. Uh, I usually use the larger diameter one if it's a large solder joint like uh, PL259 uh, you're connecting up or something like that. And I use the smaller one uh, if it's something uh, smaller like some kind of little connector or something that you want to attach to a piece of wire. So solder is something good to have in your box are in your bag. The other thing I carry is a little tube of dielectric grease. Dielectric grease. Uh, <clears throat> multiple brands of this stuff out there, but basically it's a lubricant uh, that you can put on antenna connectors or 
PL259 connectors and things like that. And uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it maintains the electrical connection just fine and permits you to disassemble that part or that antenna piece uh, several years down the road without any problems. So I carry a little tube of dielectric grease in my bag. I gotta say one of the most used pieces of tools that I carry I got off of DX Engineering and it's uh, coax cable cutter. Uh, the neat thing about this cutter is it will cut a piece of uh, say RG213 which is quite big, cut it absolutely straight without crushing it. That's very important. So uh, since we're always fooling with some kind of coax that might have gone bad or, uh, you know, you want to replace the connector on it, uh, I would say to get out there, and uh, these are not very inexpensive, but they are well worth buying. You won't damage the coax when you cut it. If you use the, a regular coax cutting tool like this one. You can get them off of DX Engineering. I'll put some links again on the bottom of the page. Probably one of the most important things to carry around is a multimeter. A multimeter. And I just stepped out there and bought a little multimeter. And I just happened to have uh, <clears throat> this case laying around. And I keep it in there just to protect it. Uh, be sure you check the batteries about once a year and just go ahead and change them because you don't want to be caught out in the field needing a multimeter and discover the batteries are dead. So just go ahead and replace them every year. Even though it might still be turning on, just go replace the batteries and that way you'll always have a good multimeter to uh, troubleshoot any kind of electrical connections or to troubleshoot coax uh, when you're out in the field or at the ham shack in the backyard somewhere trying to do it. A multimeter, not very expensive, but I would say uh, you probably need to pay in the teens, you know, $13 to $20 and get yourself a pretty good one rather than trying to buy one of those two or three dollar ones that you find on uh, eBay or on the internet. Get yourself a $15 multimeter. Two of the most useful tools in the box, uh, again off of DX Engineering, is this little tool here. Let me see if I can kind of give you a little bit better look at it. I don't know if you can read that or not. Let's, let's give it a try. I don't know. Anyway, what this is used for, uh, you know you're putting on a uh, connector. They make them in two sizes. Small coax, large coax. So it comes in two sizes. This one is for the larger coax. You get that connector on there, you can put this onto the connector and screw that connector down onto the coax. It grabs onto the connector without damaging it and allows you to screw it down onto the coax to the proper depth. And uh, this is real handy in the field. You don't, you know, normally you get a pair of pliers or something and try to turn the coax you might uh, turn the connector, you might damage it. This one prevents any damage to the connector. And again, it's available on DX Engineering. You don't have to worry on these strange ones. I'll put a direct link on uh, in the bottom in the comments to some of these strange tool pieces that you really need a link to find. And probably one of the neatest things I ever bought was this coax stripper. Again, it's sort of adjustable using this uh, little uh, 
set screw right here. It's adjustable. It's adjusted right now for RG213. It'll work on LMR400 and uh, it'll work on a little bitty coax. And what you do is uh, it's a two-step procedure. They make it uh, real easy. They tell you which end to use first, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, there's only two possibilities, but marked on here is uh, use this in first. So you put that into a piece of coax that you cut. You, know, you cut it with this tool. And first it takes off the center perfectly and exposes the center conductor. And then you flip it over and you do the same thing with the other side and it takes the uh, plastic covering off perfectly without messing up the braid that's underneath. So very handy tool to have in your uh, toolkit for amateur radio. I'll put you a link to this on there. Another tool that I'd say everybody needs to buy is a good pair of what's called nippers. There's a million uses for this in the hobby. Uh, trimming uh, the little braid, pieces of braid that might be sticking out causing a sh and could cause a short. Uh, you know, that's probably my primary use for this. But uh, in one of my other videos, I told you I'd never solder the shield uh, portion of the connection. I soldered the center connector when I'm putting on a two, uh, PL259, but I don't solder the shield. I just rotate the connector on there and uh, put it on. I've never had a problem. Then I solder the end connector, the uh, center connector, uh, and I use this to just trim that coax to probably an eighth of an inch uh, after I fold it back uh, and then start screwing that connector on. It's on tight and it's making 360 degree connection to ground. Uh, never had it fail been up in the tower uh, with those connections uh, for six years now, no problems ever. And then I go ahead and seal it, seal it, as I said before, with the two types of coax to keep it waterproof. I don't uh, solder the braid. A lot of people don't solder the braid uh, on connectors. They just compression fit it. And that's where this tool uh, right here comes in real handy because it helps you screw down the uh, PL259 connector all the way in. And uh, if you tried to do that with two pairs of pliers, you'd probably wind up damaging the uh, uh, center insulation in the coax. You'd compress it and the what that does is uh, all the specs on the coax assume that the center connector, uh, the center wire, is absolutely in the middle of the foam or plastic insulation that it's embedded in. If you crush it, it's going to go to one side closer than the other side. And then the specification is not the same as it was before. You'll have less insulation on one side than you do on the other. So it's very important to keep that center uh, wire in the center of the coax without crushing the coax. So that's where uh, this kind of comes in real handy. And then of course, finally, a pair of uh, wire strippers of some kind. And I just have a little pair of wire strippers in the toolbox. So you need a pair of wire strippers of some kind. There's all kind of different types, even some kind that, uh, you know, you clamp down and it 
it strips the wire. Uh, I just went kind of the cheap way and used the old-fashioned wire strippers. Now, in addition to that bag I showed you, uh, you need to go to Walmart and buy yourself one of these uh, fishing tackle boxes for a few dollars, okay? And uh, what I use it for is to, uh, make, you know, kind of organize all of, all of my different connections, connectors. See, I got various types of connectors and they're all organized. And the little trays uh, keep it organized to where you can find something if you need it. So uh, for your connectors, just go out there and get you a little, uh, I call them tackle boxes, you know, little plastic tackle boxes that you normally put fishing lures in or something. And uh, use that to organize your connectors of all types or other little small parts that you don't want to lose. Let's see, I've got some unusual ones in here. Let's see if I can show you. Uh, yeah, I've got a, another uh, lightning arrester plug uh, for my Alpha Delta lightning arresters. They're very small, don't want to lose it. So I've got that in here in case I ever have to replace that lightning protection uh, arc plug. Uh, it's in here. A replacement is in here. And I can, you know, get to it and know exactly where it is. Another small piece might be something like, uh, let's see if I can get one out for you. These little uh, couplers, I call them couplers, and uh, you know, the PL259 screws on this side and another PL259 screws on this side and you can make an extension. I know a lot of people say, you know, oh, hey, that causes uh, problems. The bump on a uh, spec spectrum scope uh, is so small <laughs> that it's actually, uh, you know, not something we actually need to talk about. Uh, yes, it does cause a change in the impedance, but that change is very tiny, and it really won't cause you any problems if you extend the piece of coax. Just remember, if you're going to leave this up permanently, you're not doing something in the field just uh, for today, and then you're going to take it down. You're going to use this as a permanent extension, be sure you do that uh, waterproofing on here and uh, extend that waterproofing uh, out a little ways on the coax. And if it happens to be running down like this, the extension is running down, be sure you put a little drip loop over here so the water runs down and drips off. And then there's kind of an up angle and then down into here. That way the water won't run straight down over the connection. You know, that helps to keep it waterproof too by putting that little droop in the coax. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the most important things in the toolbox. Of course, you're going to put some kind of screwdrivers in there and you're going to put some kind of pliers in there and probably a wire cutter of some kind. Uh, those are kind of obvious, but this is not obvious, for example. Uh, neither is this uh, rescue tape very obvious. This is very important for all your connections. So uh, anyway, I'll have some links down to the bottom here where you can uh, maybe uh, find some of these things a little easier. And with that said, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies in 73. Hope you, uh, this video helped you a little bit. Keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Everybody be good. See y'all later.